Hello everyone, how are you? Haga Shavuot is coming and before the hug, I want to talk a little bit about the things that we have to do to prepare ourselves better for this holiday. And this year, uh, Haga Shavuot is going to fall on Motzei Shabbat. So we actually have two days like Shabbat. We have the Shabbat day that comes from Friday night to Saturday night. And on Saturday night, we have uh, Shavuot. Okay, now what do we do? How do we act? How do we act like, like the candles? How, when do we do Abdullah? Uh, all these things that maybe we have a question about, I want to clarify it now. So, of course, on Friday, I am uh, going to light candles, two, two candles, the same as I'm doing every uh, Shabbat. And I'm going uh, to, to, there is a difference between Sephardi and Ashkenazi and how to light candles for Shabbat. Sephardi, they usually um, uh, bless and then light. Yes, because Sephardi women do not accept Shabbat when they light the candles. And Ashkenazi women, usually they uh, first light and then bless because in the moment they say the blessing, they they already accept the Shabbat upon themselves and if they would first uh, bless they would not be able to light anymore because they would break Shabbat right so that's why this is the difference between Sephardi and Ashkenazi so on Friday we light candles uh, normally yes before we light the candles it's very important to uh, light a memorial candle that it's uh, gonna be able to be there for 48 hours Yes, uh, at least for, for us to be able to use this fire on Yom Tov, on uh, Saturday night and, um, uh, you know, Sunday to cook if we need to, um, you know, to take the fire and, of course, to light the candles on Saturday night. Saturday night, when Shabbat is out, right away Yom Tov, uh, Shavuot is coming in. So it means that I am not able to do any melacha yet. I am able to light after sunset, yes, the uh, fire that it's, um, that I take from a pre-existing flame. That's why I have to have, before that I have to have the uh, actual memorial candle that is, uh, is going to be uh, uh, still there, yes, for me to take the light from it. And I'm going to light candles again. Okay, so Shabbat comes out. Now, before we talk about Shavuot and how we go from Shabbat to Shavuot, um, also this Shabbat we have to be very, very careful with preparing ourselves for Shavuot, okay? There is a halakha that says that we are not allowed on Shabbat to prepare for a different day. Yes, that's why on a third meal on Shabbat, we are not allowed to clean the meal until Shabbat is actually out because that would mean that I'm preparing the house already for Motzei Shabbat. And the reason that I am able to clean the table and everything that I need to do on Friday night and, and Saturday morning is because I need to eat again. Yes, on Friday night, I need to have another meal in the morning. And then uh, uh, when I finish the meal in the morning, I have to have another meal in the afternoon. Yes, we have three meals on Shabbat. So on Seudah Shlishit, that's it. I don't need to use the, the table anymore. Up until Shabbat, it's out. And then I'm not allowed to prepare anything. So I'm not allowed to clean the table uh, for Motzei Shabbat. I need to actually wait until Shabbat is out and then I can clean. Okay, so what do we do this Shabbat? It's very, very important to be careful and not prepare anything for Shavuot. So um, what we do we're going to actually have an earlier third meal. It's still necessary to have three meals on Shabbat, even though it's very hard because in the evening we have another meal for Shavuot, yes? And we have to go into the holiday hungry and really, really enjoying our time. So it's going to be very hard when you're eating so much on Shabbat. So what do we do? Yes, so we eat a normal meal on Friday night. On Saturday morning, try to eat, Shabbat morning, try to eat an earlier meal. I don't know, we usually eat around 10, 10 o'clock, 10, 10, 30, but I know that many people are even eating a little bit later. You have to be careful that you have to make Kiddush before the middle of the day, okay? Um, so it's going to com be considered still morning, yes, the, the day Kiddush. And um, so we do a normal meal in the morning, and then the third meal should be done around two or three o'clock. 
you don't have to make a huge third meal. You can make a smaller uh, third meal, but instead of doing it like you usually do, or at least I'm doing it like that in my home at six o'clock in the afternoon, yeah, in the, in the almost evening, just before sunset, like an hour before sunset, we do the third meal. This time you're gonna do it early. You're gonna do it around two, three o'clock. You stop eating after that. And then of course we go into the holiday with Teavon, with we need to eat, yes? So first of all, that's the thing. We do this third meal, even though um, you can say, okay, we are actually preparing, yes, for the, well, we're not really preparing because we are eating. So we are allowed to eat earlier than the time that uh, we're giving. We don't have to eat uh, the third meal at six o'clock, yes? So we are preparing ourselves um, um, uh, spiritually, I would say, more for the holiday. So we eat uh, uh, very early, uh, so that's Shlishi, the third meal. Okay, so I have my memorial candle, Shabbat is out, Yom Tov comes in. I'm gonna take, um, you know, this. Um, I prefer to have the big ones because they have time to burn. I will take one. Of course, I am Sephardi, so I'm going to bless before. And of course, I'm going to light the candles from a pre-existing flame. I'm not going to light a new flame. It's not possible. I'm going to take the light from the fire that I already have it. Yes, I will take it and I will say the blessing. ברוך אתה השם, אלוקינו מלך העולם, אשר כי ישן במזותיו וציוונו להדליק נר של יום טוב. אוקיי? Okay? I'm going to light my candles, and then we have to be very careful not to close it or not to do fu. אוקיי? Okay? Why? Because we're not allowed to close a fire on a Yom Tov. We're only allowed to cook from a pre-existing flame and we're allowed to light fire from a pre-existing flame. That's why you cannot actually uh, open the oven on a Yom Tov because it's going to... That's a new fire, okay? You can use a Shabbat clock, but you're not allowed to open the oven, actually to open the fire because you, uh, you're going to open the fire, yes? Okay, I light my candles. If you are Ashkenazi, of course, you are going to say Sheikh Yanu in this moment. I am Sephardi, so Sephardi women usually don't say Sheikh Yanu when they light candles. They will do that in Kiddush. And of course, we go to the synagogue. We do the same thing that we are doing on a Yom Tov. And then uh, we come back home and we do Kiddush. When we do Kiddush, we also have to do Avdalah. Okay, so what do we do? How do we do Avdalah on Motzei Shabbat? while we're still in, in Yom Tov, right? So we do the normal Kiddush that we're doing for uh, Yom Tov. And then you have uh, the possibility to take fire because Avdalah on Motzei Shabbat is done only with fire. We use the wine that we are drinking anyway for the Kiddush and we use the fire. We don't use Besamim. Besamim are usually uh, spices. Yes, they are usually used uh, to when we have the extra soul on Shabbat that comes out. But because in this time we're going from Kodesh to Kodesh, from sanctity to sanctity, it's not necessary to uh, have uh, Besamim. Yes, to have spices. So we just use the fire. But it's very important not to do Avdalah on the pre-existing flame that I had on Friday. If I have a memorial candle that I lighted on Friday, I still have to actually light an Avdalah candle. Now, if I light an Avdalah candle and I do Bore Priya um, Esh on Avdalah candle, I am not allowed to close the fire anymore. So what do I do? Yes, very, very interesting. So you, there are many, many, many ways to do it. One is just to light a candle that, no, the candle of the Avdalah, it has to actually be a big flame, yes, or at least two flames together. So people do this in different ways. One is to just take a very, very small, tiny candle, you light it, you say boy Priya Esh, and you just put it away somewhere and you leave it there until it's just gonna burn by itself. Or you can take a normal, you know, Avdalah candle, just leave it there, it is gonna burn by itself. Or there is another way to do that by actually taking the two of this and put them together. You have a bleak flame, you put it somewhere on a plate or something like this, wait until it's completely gone. Yes, and then you can throw it away. But also this, you have to be careful again, not to open a, pre, uh, a, a, um, a fire that, it, that it's a new fire. You still have to take it from the fire that I have on Friday, okay? So we light the candles. From the pre-existing flame, we're doing Kiddush, we're doing Avdalah on Motzei Shabbat, right? 
And then <laughs> we have to eat. Now, we have a custom in Shavuot to eat um, um, dairy food, okay? There are, there are many, many reasons for this custom. Uh, one of the reasons is that when Am Yisrael received the Torah on, on Mount Sinai, um, Am Yisrael still did not have time to kosher anything, yes? Not, not to slaughter and not to kosher the vessels and everything that they used. So they ate something that was dairy for them to be able to actually eat kosher because they already were obligated to uh, receive it. There are many, many uh, <laughs> reasons why we are doing this custom. I'm not going to really go into it, but it's a, it, we have to remember it's a custom. Okay, now, many people think that you have to eat dairy in Shabbat. Yes, you have to eat it. Yes, it's a very, very beautiful custom to eat, but don't forget that Allah says clearly that there is no happiness without wine and meat. So that's, that means that we really have to eat twice meat on Shavuot. Allahically, we are obligated to eat two meals with meat and to drink not tirosh, not uh, grape juice, to actually drink wine on the meal. Okay, it's very, very important because uh, a person, uh, now, if you're vegan or you're a vegetarian and you don't eat meat, you don't eat meat. Okay, we're going to eat dairy anyway. Yes, you, you cannot change that. But if you're not and you usually eat meat home on Shabbat, you need to, to be <laughs> to understand that you have to eat meat on both meals. Now, what do we do? On a Yom Tov, we do not have three meals. We only have two meals. So what can I do if I also want to eat something dairy? What can I do? So... Galaha says like this that on Friday on Saturday night lesson on uh, when when the holiday comes in I'm going to eat something with meat yes uh, meat meal and I'm going to drink wine in the morning because many people go and pray on Shavuot all night yes they have the tikkun of Shavuot they go and pray all night they come in the morning my husband usually walks to the kotel and it's very there is a, a Jerusalem custom for people to go and walk to the western wall uh, during the night of Shavuot you're going to see many people on the streets it's beautiful to see it it's amazing it's a very very um, incredible feeling of receiving the Torah with everybody and um, women are not obligated to stay awake all night, but you can if you want to. So men go to pray to the synagogue all night. Uh, they, come, they, they usually make a very, very early prayer uh, that it's called Netzachama. Netzachama, it means that you pray when the sun, when it's sunrise. Yes, you do Amida when you see the sun rising. And um, you come home around seven in the morning. Yes, after you didn't sleep all night. And you want to eat, you're not gonna eat a meaty meal then, yes? So you do kiddush and you do something with mezonot, you do kiddush with mezonot, and then you can eat something with cheese, yeah, I don't know, cheeses, you can eat some uh, croissant, you can eat some uh, borekas with cheese, you can eat, uh, I don't know, uh, a cake with cheese, whatever, uh, something that it's mezonot, you have to be careful because cheesecake are, is not always mezonot, <laughs> it's mostly shakol, so you have to be careful to actually find uh, a, che a cheesecake that is mezonot. And um, we say the kiddush, we eat this, we go to sleep like for two, three hours, four hours. And then uh, because we already did kiddush and we already pray, we can uh, meet another meal in the afternoon that is going to be a lunch, a meat meal. That's usually what people are doing. Of course, if you sleep at night and you don't go to the West of Born in that night, then uh, you can wake up in the morning and uh, eat a normal meal with meat. Yes. And then wait six hours. <laughs> <laughs> and then make like a third meal, you know, eat another meal with cheese in the afternoon. As long as it's done in the time of um, the holiday, it's still okay and no problem. Don't forget that when you do Kiddush, you have to say the blessing of Sheikh Yanu. Um, and we are um, uh, reading Megillat Ruth on Shavuot. Yes, there are many, many reasons why we do that. One of the reasons is that... Um, David, yes, the king of Israel, he uh, was born and passed in Shavuot. They also wrote her name in Gematria. It's actually, uh, um, if you, by the way, if you add a, a hey to her name and you turn it around, you have Torah, yes? So Ruth was not, uh, she only was obligated to do 600, uh, um, she only was obligated to do seven uh, um, mitzvot of Noach, yes? And she took upon herself um, all the other mitzvot to be able to have 613. That's the gematria of her name. 
and it's so um, amazing. We also say the Ten Commandments in this day. Now, many, many people, there is a, a custom to stand up, to stand uh, whoever. Um, you have to follow the customs that, that you already, uh, you, you're going to see in a synagogue. Whoever wants, uh, and, uh, wants to stand will stand. Whoever will sit will sit. It's not really necessary to change that. And um, it's not that uh, they are doing right and they are not doing right. Everybody's doing right. We all do the will of Hashem the best way that we can. And we all, um, um, I, I really wish that we will always have the merit to come together and accept the mitzvot and the Torah once again, because this is not just a remembrance of that day. For us, it's actually happening every year when we renew our covenant with Hashem and we tell Him, yes, we do want to be Jewish. We do want to do your mitzvot. We do, we want the connection with you. We are your children. And Nase Venishma. Hag Shavuot Sameach.